Hi everyone, welcome to episode 3 of ARM Template Masterclass. This week we're going to take a look at parameters and variables. We were originally going to have a look at functions as well, but I think parameters and variables are going to be more than enough just to fill up this episode, so we'll move functions into episode 4. Parameters and variables are the things that allow us to pass information into our templates and to vary those templates based on user input or based on a set of global variables and so on. In our first template we wrote last week, everything we did was hard-coded into the template. That's fine if you've got a fairly simple template and you're only going to deploy it once, um, but as soon as you start wanting to be able to do more complex things or be able to redeploy your template for different environments, different users and so on, you're going to have to look at how you can parameterize these templates to work in a more generic fashion. One of the most common uses for a parameterized template is where you're looking to deploy the same resources into development, test and production. You want to use the same template, but obviously you're going to want to vary things like names, maybe VM sizes or storage account SKUs or other such things. So a parameterized template is really essential to make sure you can reuse the same templates, but amend them to match your requirements. It's very rare that I see a template that doesn't have parameters and variables in use. So this is going to be an essential skill for your journey with ARM templates. So let's first look at parameters. As I mentioned, these are the way that you can allow the user of your template to pass in values when they run the template and so vary things at runtime. So for example, in our template we did last week where we're deploying a storage account, maybe we're gonna allow them to pass in the storage account name and perhaps the type of storage, whether it's locally redundant, geo redundant, and so on. Those are the sort of things I can see a user wanting to be able to vary when they come to deploy the template. So over here, we've got the documentation from the Microsoft website about how parameters actually work. So parameters are a component of the ARM template that sit in the parameters section, as you might expect. And each parameter is created with a name. That's a required field, so you're going to have to name all of your parameters, and they need to be obviously uniquely named. In addition to the name, we then have an object which defines all the properties of the parameter. Now, you don't have to specify all of these. The ones I do recommend you do as a minimum are the type, so this is whether they are a string, uh, integer, and so on. There are seven different types you can use with ARM templates. You can't just use any old type. You're basically limited to strings, secure strings, integers, booleans, objects, secure objects, and arrays. The other part I would recommend you add is the metadata section and a description, so that you can add a description of what the variable is for. When people are using the template, they can get that information. So those are the bare minimum I would suggest you use. You do have some other options as well you can look at, such as default values, so you can set a value if, if nobody provides a parameter. If you don't have a default value, then if somebody doesn't provide that parameter when they deploy the template, they will either be asked for it or they'll get an error depending on how they're deploying it. You can pass in an array of allowed values, so you can limit the type of values that people are allowed to pass in, You can so you can give it an array of strings that you allow or um, integers and so on. You can have a min value and max value for integers or a min length and max length for strings that allow you to limit what can actually be passed in in terms of integers and strings at the very least. So that's what a parameter looks like. Let's head over to VS Code and use this to amend our actual template. Here's the template we created last time for creating our storage account. And what we're gonna do is what we discussed a minute ago, we're gonna add parameters for the name and for the storage type. So let's go to the parameters section and we'll expand that, and then we're going to add a parameter. So again, with the snippets, we already have a predefined parameter snippet. So if you type arm-param, and you'll see that come up, you want the arm-param value on, and we'll click enter, and that'll add the parameter for us. And this has the minimum I talked about before already pre-configured. So the name, the type, and the description. And so for our storage account name parameter, that's all we're going to need, because we don't really want to limit what the user can put in here. Um, at least with the controls that are provided to us. So the user will have free text to put in here. So we'll give it a name. We'll call it storage account name. Type is string. And we'll add a description. Okay, so that one's ready to go. Now we'll do the same. And we'll add another parameter for our storage account type. We'll give it a name of storage account type. Again, a value of string and a description. And here we do want to limit what the user can put in. So there are only a few predefined storage account types. So we're going to use the allowed values option, and which can add an array of strings, which define, which define the values that we're going to allow for this field. We're also going to add a default value option, so that if nobody specifies anything here, we'll default to using locally redundant storage. 
So there's our two parameters ready to go, but at the minute they're not really any use. You can feed them into the template, but they're not going to be used anywhere. So we need to amend our template to actually use these when we create our storage account. So let's go down to the resource where we create the storage account. And what we need to do is to reference them. And to reference a parameter, we actually need to use a function. And I, now I know we haven't gone into those yet, but this is a fairly simple one. In our name section, we're going to delete the hard-coded value heading there, keeping the quotes. And then we're going to put a set of square braces. So square braces indicate to the ARM template that we're using a function here. So this isn't just a string. It actually needs to interpolate the value and replace it with whatever the function is doing. So we've got our square brackets. And then we're going to call our function. And this is just the parameter function. So it's the word parameter and then some brackets and then the name of the parameter we actually want to reference here in quotes. So for this one, we're going to look at storage account name. And that's it. So now when we run this template, the name of the storage account is going to be set to whatever has been passed in from that parameter. We'll also repeat that process for the account type to use our storage account type value. And that's our template ready to go now with the two parameters. Now that we've parameterized our template, how do we actually deploy it? How do we pass in those parameters? There are two different ways we can do that. We're going to have a look at both of those. The first one is the simplest one and the quickest one if you just want to try it out, which is using the PowerShell command line or the CLI and passing them as part of the command you use to deploy. So to pass parameters in using the PowerShell deployment command, what we need is a hash table of the values of the parameters we're going to pass in. You can create this hash table in line in the deployment command, but I find it a bit easy to read if you create it as its own variable before you run the deployment command. So let's go ahead and create that. You see we're creating a hash table with two values, storage account name set to whatever we want to call the storage account, and storage account type set to the specific type we want to use. And we're putting that in the PowerShell variable called parameter obj. Now we can go ahead and run the new AZ resource group deployment command. And just like we did last week, we're going to specify a name for the deployment, the resource group we want to deploy to, and the template file we want to use. And then we're going to add a fourth parameter which is the template parameter object. And to this, we're going to pass in our hash table where we've defined our parameter values. Now, if we run that, it will go ahead and deploy our template for us using those parameters we defined. And if we quickly take a look in the Azure portal, we can see that in the resource group we specified, we now have a storage account with the name we provided. And if we look at the type, it's using standard LRS, which is the option we provided as well. Now doing that at the command line is all well and good if you just want to quickly deploy a template or you've only got a template with a couple of parameters, that's fine. But as soon as you start making more complex templates with lots of parameters or that you want to deploy over and over again, you will find that can become quite cumbersome. And so the second option is to actually specify a parameter file. This allows us to specify the actual values of our parameters in a JSON file rather than at the command line. It also gives us some additional features, such as one we're going to look at in a minute, which is pulling values from Key Vault. So in VS Code, we're going to go ahead and create a new JSON file. You can pretty much call these what you want, but generally what I tend to do to make the naming match is call them the same name as the actual template they work with, but adding .params to the end. So this one we'll call it template.params.json. As with a template, a parameter file has its own syntax and it's different to the template, but again, luckily we've got a snippet for this. So if we type arm p this time, and you can see we've got the option here for a parameters file, when we will get the skeleton added to our page. And this is a lot simpler than a template. It has one section, which is the parameters. If we expand that section, and then we type arm p again, and we'll use the other option for an arm parameter value. And this creates an object with two settings. Firstly is the name. This needs to match the name of the parameter in your template. So for our storage account name, we'll put in here storage account name. And then the value will contain the value of the parameter you want to pass in. Here it's a string. Obviously, if you were using an integer or an object or something, you would, you would amend the value to match that. Um, and so we'll put in our storage account name. We'll then go ahead and create a second parameter for our storage account type. And again, add the name and the value. We'll save that and that's now ready to go. So if we go back to our command line, 
and we're going to amend our deployment command. So we'll still use the new AZ resource group deployment command, still passing in the name, the resource group, and the template file. But now we're going to remove the template parameter object, and we're going to replace it with a template parameter file. And for this, we then pass the value as the path to wherever our parameter file is. If we go ahead and run that, that will deploy just like it did previously with the parameter object. But now everything's defined in our parameter file. So I mentioned you can do other things with a parameter file, like talking to key vault. So if you're passing in secure variables like passwords, certificates, are the sorts of things you want to pass into your template, you want to try and make sure that these are held and transported securely. And so hard coding these into your parameters file as a text value is not going to work. So instead, ARM templates come, in, come with the functionality built in to be able to go and talk to Key Vault. So the first thing we would need to do is in our actual template file, the parameter we create needs to be set to be a secure string rather than just a string. Then in our parameters file, we can go and create another parameter. It still has a name, but instead of the value section, we're going to add this reference section, which inside that has indicators to tell it which Key Vault to go and talk to and which secret to go and pull out of Key Vault. So we pass in the full ID of the key vault and then the name of the secret. And when you run this, it will then go off to key vault and fetch that value for you. Now there are some prerequisites you need to do on your key vault to make sure that when you deploy something using ARM template, it actually has the rights to go and talk to key vault. I'm not gonna go into those in detail today, but I'll add the link in the notes below the video that actually has a Microsoft tutorial on how to do that. If you want me to, let me know and I can do another video on doing this in great detail. Um, but this is a really useful feature that I use all the time when I'm trying to pass in sensitive values into my template. Now that we've got our parameters sorted, let's have a look at variables. Variables are a way for you to store values inside your template that can then be reused elsewhere in the template. So often you would do this for something that you're either going to use in multiple different places and you might need to change. You can change it in one place in the variables section rather than having to go through the template and do it multiple times, or perhaps when you're stringing complicated functions together, and again, you're going to reuse that, you can store that in one place and simplify the template by only having that complicated function syntax in a single place and referencing it elsewhere. Generally, I use variables for values that I'm going to use in the rest of the template, but that I may need to change at some point in the future, but are not something I need to vary each time I deploy the template like a parameter would be. So in our simple template with the storage account, one thing we might expose as a variable is the storage API version. As I mentioned, each resource we deploy to has an API version, and this can change over time when new features are added. So it's something we might want to change, but it's probably not something we need to pass in every time we use the template, particularly because using a later version might mean we actually need to change the resource, so it's actually gonna be a change to the template. So if we go back to our template, and you can see we've got a variable section within it. We'll expand that and we'll add our variable. Now variables are not as complicated as parameters. Variables are essentially just a key value pair. So we'll add a variable called storage API version and we'll give it a value of the API version we're gonna use. And that's it, that's all the syntax there is for variables. As with parameters, we're now gonna to have to use that in our template. So if we go into the resource, remove the hard-coded API version, and again, we're gonna use a function. Instead of the parameters function, it's the variables function. So we start with our square brackets to indicate that there's a function here. And then we call the variables function, and then inside the brackets, we put the name of the variable we want to use. And that's it. So now, at runtime, that's gonna get substituted for our variable version. If we find we want to change that in the future, we can just go into our variables section and amend that, and that will flow into our template. If we had multiple storage accounts being deployed, then we could have them all use this variable and we'd only have to change it once. So that's everything we're going to cover today. We've now got our example template to a point where we've parameterized, so we could have a different storage account name and type in our development environment compared to our production environment or for a different user and so on. And we've added a variable that allows us to easily change the API version in the future if we want to move to a later one. Hopefully you're able to follow along and your template's now working in exactly the same way. If you want to look at the examples from today's lesson, they're on GitHub as usual in the ARM Masterclass repo and the link for that is in the video notes as well. Hopefully you found that useful. If there are any questions, please put them in the comments section. I'll be happy to answer them. 
Next week, we're going to take a look at functions and so how we can use some of the functions that Microsoft have provided as part of the language to enhance our templates and do more exciting things. Until then, have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time.